Welcome back everyone. I hope you all had a wonderful day yesterday. So today we're going to continue the transfer drawing and in particular we're going to go ahead and take a look at the hand. So um, in terms of the proportion of the hand, remember we already uh, completed the big shape block in for the entire figure. So basically the parameters that I'm going to try to uh, maintain are basically the knuckle. So this is going to be the knuckle, this is going to be the wrist. So as long as the wrist is, the wrist remains here and the knuckle, the furthest point here for the knuckles remains there, uh, we should be good to build a hand that is proportional to the figure uh, that we've been working on. So let's just go ahead and look at the outside shape now. So we have two hands here. Of course, I mean, we have two hands. But you can see the side of her hand on the other side. But you can only really see the corner of the wrist. So it does appear a little bit ambiguous in nature. So if it's ambiguous in nature, it's okay if it's a little ambiguous in the drawing. All it is is just a little angle here, and that's about it, I think, for that. Now with the with the contour, I'm going to think very two-dimensional. Now usually I emphasize the three-dimensionality of, uh, of a picture, but for instances that are as complex as this hand, I think that it's just easier to think about just two-dimensional shape. So I'm just imagining I'm a little ant walking around the surface here, a little ant, picture a little ant walking back and forth, back and forth. Actually, that would go nowhere. A little ant is going jump, 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 jump. Knuckle, then the ant is going down, going down, 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 a little slip slip and slide, little slope, and then stops right about there. And um, so the ant goes right down this little hill and then finds itself going right off the cliff. So what we have now is the corner of the finger, the pointer finger on this side. Now the knuckle to the wrist is going to be the most important proportion. Now if I mess up with the fingers, if I make one finger a little bit longer than the other, uh, it's not the end of the day. The fingers are much easier to to move around than the actual uh, knuckle to the wrist bone. And I'm not really an anatomist. I'm not going to pretend to know a lot of the anatomy I'm much more perceptual when it comes to um, hands. So here we have one finger, and here we have the other finger. Just following along this little S curve here. Imagine the ant was holding on for dear life here, and now it's just climbing right underneath the surface of the fingers. Now this shape is coming in a little bit. Now using a vertical, we have that the pinky, the pinky using a vertical is a little further to the right relative to this knuckle. So make a mark for where the where we think the pinky is going to go somewhere about there and it's good it's a little further to the right relative to a vertical so again I'm just trying to use that little ant analogy just to to just prove a point that you don't really have to know exactly what you're looking at sometimes 
can just picture it as an ant just kind of exploring the surface, just thinking about shape. So now we're going to reach something that's even more complex. So I think that the hand in this particular pose is a little more complicated than the uh, portrait, so, or that is than the face. So let's continue this line here that we had before, imagining the hand, see now, this angle might need to come inwards a little bit, imagining the hand on the other side going down like this. So thinking of the of the model's right hand resting right underneath the model's left hand and we see a little glimpse of the other hand just a tiny little glimpse so now the next thing to do is going to be to establish some light and dark patterns for the hand. So let's see. I think that I'm going to start with the fingers. A little dark shape here. Dark shape here. I'm imagining the light source now coming in from this direction. Dark shape here. And all of this is dark. Let's go ahead and fill in these little dark shapes. Now with the stump, let's go ahead and just uh, unify these shapes. So you may be wondering what this fold is here in the paper. So remember, um, I have two sheets of paper uh, taped onto each other just because I didn't have paper long enough for, or paper wide enough for the transfer drawing that we are creating. This shouldn't really get in the way of the development of the hand. angle here so I'm really thinking of each bone now so I'm thinking of the knuckles here and how the knuckle is going around here and then the finger is turning in I think that the bones are called the phalanges phalange wrapping down here then again, don't quote me on any anatomical stuff. A really good resource to look at for uh, learning how to simplify hands is the, uh, the famous Barg drawings. I uh, did a number of Barg uh, copies uh, a couple years ago and I find that they really really help in terms of simplification of form and just simple patterns of light and dark. This comes out a little more. So again it's it's really a back and forth-ish kind of thing just like with the portrait, sometimes you think that you have everything in the right place and then all of a sudden you have to move the mouth a little bit or move the eye a little bit. Same kind of thing with the hands. Think of the hands, I think of the hands as like almost like another portrait. So um, this is the point that I don't want to lose. So I'm going to go ahead and just make sure that this little mark stays here. But now I'm going to start to put in some little indications for the the, uh, the knuckle knuckles over here. So 
So let's get a stump. So using just a little half tone, we have our little place marker there for one knuckle. Let's take a look at the other one. Now hands, at least for me, they go through so many different stages and so many different appearances. Sometimes for me, they'll look somewhat like a claw for a while. Uh, usually if a hand is looking like a claw, it's usually because we're, we're missing some information for the thumbs. Sometimes it'll look like a paw. I don't know. If it looks like a paw, it's because something's going on with the knuckles and the fingers, which is probably what's going on here, but it's okay. Now remember, this drawing, the, in, the intention of this drawing is to transfer onto a canvas or a panel for painting. So really, I'm just trying to solve the problem of proportion and at the same time get myself acclimated to the shapes. usually not a good idea to just try to jump into a canvas and think that you're going to create the best painting ever without any kind of preliminary studies. Now, there are obviously exceptions to that. I am not one of those exceptions. It takes me quite a while to figure out drawing and proportion and all that stuff. So it's just more beneficial, at least for me, to solve a lot of problems in a transfer drawing before attempting to start a painting. So now with the dark side of the stump, I'm starting to put in a little half tone here for the knuckles. So the knuckles are turning. So the knuckles right here are a plane change. And this plane change that we're drawing in right now The angle is much further away from the light here on this little band of value than on the fingers. These little tiny stumps are really useful for small plane changes. Now we're going to start to add even more specificity onto these shapes. And I think hands present a sort of psychological challenge that, um, that the portrait itself does. We are so used to looking at hands, uh, just like we're used to looking at faces, that any little thing that's a little bit off on the hand can be kind of a big thing. But I don't think it's as major as, uh, as a portrait or as the face. You can get the hand a little different. You can get some, you can have some discrepancies in the hand, but if it still looks like a hand, then you're, you're in a good place. So again, I'm just walking my way over from one finger to the other, adjusting each of the shapes So this little half tone needs to get darker for the knuckle. And I think this pointer finger could still extend out a little bit. So I'm going to be taking the stump and um, doing a little bit of the shading with the stump. So um, let's go ahead and look at some of the, the little half tones here. Now I don't want to do too much shading because 
again, this is a transfer drawing, so I'm going to be pretty much just taking the outlines, but I do want to gather some information for the, uh, the half tones. To be honest, I'm just Googling what the name of this is. So this is the metacarpal, metacarpal bone, metacarpals, it's plural, connecting to the phalanges right over here. Let's go ahead and just with the stump, just draw in where the metacarpals are going to go. And um, the transfer drawing is a really good chance to mess up. I know that probably doesn't sound very inspiring, but the transfer drawing is a really good arena to get acclimated to uh, to your model or to the image in front of you. It really alleviates some of the pressure of just trying to jump in and create a painting all at once. So with the stump, I'm just going to be adding some of the charcoal and then the other side of the stump. So this is the light side of the stump. Just be lightly kind of blending in that half tone. Go ahead and add some more with this little plane change here. Now I don't want to do too much. So just a few little half tones in the light. Now what's really, what has really helped me with this is um, my memory of doing Barg drawings. Uh, definitely do your Bargs. So if you're, if you're in a classical art school, you're very familiar already, I'm sure, with the Barg drawings. The Barg drawings really do push your observation skills to a whole nother level in terms of simple shape and the importance of light and dark and these dark lights. And this is a dark light. Again, it's basically the, the value just as light starts to terminate into shadow. And this is actually coming out this way. Simple little dark light there. So let's go ahead and uh, take this mark out. I'm pretty certain now that the, the hand isn't going to get, the hands aren't going to get too big. Oh yeah, and jewelry. So I guess we should add the ring. I can't really see too much um, from the photograph. So let's go ahead and put in a little dark and then I don't really see much. You know what? We put the ring in the wrong spot. Let's go ahead and move that. So that's the beauty of charcoal. You can just move things like very easily. Okay, so we put the ring back. Down here it just gets really, really dark. So back to these lights. So this half tone for this metacarpal should be a little darker. Eh, somewhere about like that. Now the other thing I'm going to be kind of cautious of with the uh, the hands is the, the little bit of information here that I, I'm seeing for the other hand. I, I want to make sure that it doesn't, that this light shape doesn't get confused with this hand. Now um, this is kind of a challenge with the photo reference because the photo reference kind of, it kind of eliminates some of the information that I would want for the other hand. So um, I'm going to go ahead and say that 
what we're seeing here is the thumb of the model's right hand here. And this is probably the pointer finger. Now, if I do this incorrectly, it might accidentally look like uh, the thumb on her left hand is in the wrong spot. So I gotta be kind of cautious with that. So that's one major disadvantage to working from photo reference is that information like that gets lost. So that's why it's important to work from life as much as possible. I certainly do. I think what might help, I'm not sure if it will, but I think that the finger needs to extend a little further here. So about there. Just going to even out the charcoal over here and subtract a little bit the light side of the stump. So again, I don't want to shade that much. Um, but then again, I do want this half tone to be a little darker. How about this? Um, we can't really see it on the photo reference, but let's just throw in a little accent mark where this hand would be overlapping the other one. So remember an accent mark is just that. It's just a very dark value created when one form rests on top of the other form and blocks out the light. So just to ensure that it doesn't look like the hand, or sorry, that these hands don't get confused with one another. Let's go ahead and push this accent value. And again, if we were working directly with paint, there would be a lot of things up in the air. Shape, value, color, proportion. But simplifying it down into a a very simple process of creating a transfer drawing, transferring it, underpainting it, and then adding on the color, it just makes it much easier. And it gives you a lot of opportunities to see where you can tweak things, such as this. So here's the wrist, wrist bone. It's going to Make that shape a little darker. So I definitely want to make some some more larger paintings. I'm, and I'm thinking of filming a, a double figure or a multiple figurative um, painting in the future for this video series. I really want you to get the experience of being in an art studio every single day. I really want you to have access to uh, this type of work basically whenever you'd like. So I guess the last thing I should do is probably reevaluate that line. So I know I should have sharpened my uh, charcoal, but you know. Actually, let's go ahead and take the stump. See if we can create a line with the stump. Goes out like that. And there's a plane change right there. Now we have a crisp line. 
created with the stump. Isn't that neat? I think that just about wraps up what I wanted to do for the hand. Uh, remember, the most important thing was just maintaining this proportion. So the proportion from the knuckle here to the wrist. Maintaining that and basically just trying to get the, the shape as well established as I possibly could. And in the end, trying to figure out how to differentiate uh, the hand that's overlapping the other hand in such a way that uh, it reads from a distance. So I hope that this video helps you out. And of course, I am now uploading new videos every single day so you can see the process unfold every single day. So I hope you all have a wonderful day and I will see you tomorrow.